All right, let's get into transition, okay? We're going to get into transition. Um, what we do in transition, okay? Does anybody or can anybody tell me the difference between a fast break and a secondary break? Have we heard secondary break before? Do we know fast? What's the difference? Fast break. If you don't talk, coaches, parents won't talk. Players won't talk. What's the fact? Absolutely. Um, 100%. Really the, the easiest way that we define it is that you're completely correct. Fast breaks is a number advantage, right? Secondary break is when you don't have a numbers advantage. Really it's going to end up being one, two, or three passes, really three passes where you end up don't have a, a numbers advantage anymore. So it has to flow into really a secondary break, which is really a quick hitter, which would flow into your offense. Okay, so that's mainly the difference on it, all right? So we will go, and please take these rules down for fast breaks, okay? Because when we get into this transition drill, you're gonna understand this, all right? Let me have you, 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 and you. Give me the seven grade. Yes, everybody else get your basketballs and be off the court. Liam, step off for this. Get your back, get all the basketballs, get them off the court. Hustle up, let's go, hustle up, thank you. All right, so. We're just gonna give generic numbers here, okay? And again, for us, we always have them play different positions. We'll give them a number and that's what they have to play because if Max is a point guard, right? Raise your hand. The thing that's gonna make him a great point guard is really understanding what the post does. You know, a great way to understand what the post is is to play that position. And it's not gonna hurt you for five minutes that you played the post in a game, all right? So we really wanna teach them the whole thing about basketball, right? So let's just say you were the five you were the four, you were the two, you were the three, you were the one, okay? All right, basic kind of basketball stuff here, all right? We're catching every outlet pass, Max, catch the outlet pass, free throw lane extended. Free throw lane extended. And you wanna have your butt to the baseline, outside the three, I'm sorry, butt to the sideline. That's where he wants to be, point guards catching the outlet pass, right? Twos and threes, we all know that they're interchangeable lanes, they can run, they need to be hard, wide, okay, and fast. So we always say by half court, your foot needs to get out of bounds. Your outside foot should be out of bounds. That should be the angle that you're taking, okay? So twos and threes, go, doesn't matter which ones. Boom, they're running their lanes, we got it. Now, whoever doesn't have the rebound, if Justin got the rebound, then Brian turns into the rim runner, okay? So we'll play fours and fives are interchangeable, rim runner. All right, your lane ends up being straight down the middle of the basketball hoop, and you're sprinting. That's your first thing, that's your first look, okay, is the rim runner, all right? So when we get the outlet, obviously now Justin's gonna end up turning into the trailer, okay? Um, his looks first, point guard. First thing, your first look is the rim runner, all right? The first thing you're trying to do is get that person out sprinting everybody, hit the big dunk, we're done, okay? Next look, sideline, uh, ball side sideline all right third look we're going to end up bending the ball and we would go weak side sideline if nothing happens we're just going to take it up we got to choose a side okay then we're going to end up having that basic fast break kind of principles okay uh you will see our guys peter right now tom right now they will end up hitting the corners all right well, whenever we do kind of fast break drills we always tell them get to the corners all right, because you will see kids a lot of the times catch the ball on the 45, take one dribble and pick it up. It's not doing anything for you. We want to space the court like crazy. We can always lift you back out of the corner, but we will tell them sprint. If you don't get the ball at the 45, hit the corners because that makes us have way more spacing. All right, so we start to try to teach them more kind of high school philosophies once they start getting here. All right, if we were running into just a basic kind of secondary, we would dribble the ball up here. You would trail. Rim runner is going to empty out ball side. Right there, so immediately if Tom pulled, pass the ball to Tom, post Brian, you gotta pass, pass, you gotta dive, life is good, right? So then Justin would dive to the rim, boom, you see Peter's gonna lift, boom, we're all good. Those type of movements should happen, but again, because they know how to move without the ball, this starts to make a little bit more sense to them. Do it again. So in this situation, if Max advanced to Tom, Tom gave it to Brian, Stop. He dove, but he didn't get it. It doesn't matter because he turned out middle, and now he's got to lift and stay in his vision, stay there, and then he's open now. Do we understand? So it's all going to be that movement. Now, if he has the ball here, okay, back to the original spots. If we reverse through the four, obviously Peter's going to have to lift now, okay? He lifts up to the 45. We'll stagger away. Brian will follow the ball. 
We'll set a stagger screen away. Now, again, it comes to screening principles here, right? Stop. If Justin Mann was to help, right, Tom would go, he would slip. Max would just come out, right? All this stuff makes a lot more sense to them because they understand our screening principles, right? So then when we're explaining it in a five-on-0 situation, five-on-five -on -five situation, they have something to draw back on, okay? That's why I'm saying we had to build it up how we had to do because now it makes sense to them. Okay, so we'd end up getting to a basic stagger. That could flow into any one of your offenses, okay? But that is just a basic kind of secondary break. When it comes to things, coaches, and I'm going to do on this one, let's go all the way back here. Everybody go here in three lines on a baseline, three basketballs. Let's look. Um, this is my favor to high school coaches, and you guys are going to all roll your eyes at this, um, but I'm telling you right now, a lot of everybody, not you, does not teach this correctly. It's a three-man weave. Okay, but you don't teach it correctly and it ends up killing the kids when they get to high school, all right? We will start our three-man weave allowing this ball handler to take one dribble in advance. The reason three-man weave is important, all right, because it always comes back to fundamentals. You're gonna have to pass, catch, and you're gonna have to make a layup. Team USA does three-man weave. So while everybody starts to feel like they're too good for drills, I don't understand. Team USA does three-man weave and you know what? They have to get disciplined every time they bobble the ball, all right, or they don't catch the ball, then it's push-ups or something like that they have to do because it's all about catching and passing on time. Your players are gonna have to learn how to pass off the dribble, pass off the catch. All right, the catch and chuck, please tell them to stop doing that. It's never gonna work in basketball. So you're gonna have to teach them how to advance the ball. All right, give me the ball. This is the catch and chuck. I'll dribble the ball here. That's not gonna work in basketball. All right, they're gonna have to learn how to catch the basketball, take two steps, pass. You're gonna have to learn how to run through the pass, okay? That's what the three-man weave should be able to teach you. It teaches you to run your lanes wide, it teaches you to communicate, whatever you wanna do, okay? But we have to start understanding how to teach this properly. And what this means is, he's got the ball. Liam, you would be, let's just say we're coming right, all right? What Liam has to do is get up and over. Okay, so he's not just gonna run up. Tom has to tuck it and run and get to half court by then because he's running on a slant. All right, the reason I'm telling you this is, coaches, is go to your practice and run three-man weave and watch everybody just run straight. It makes the passes too long, it's not realistic, right? And you're not helping them do anything because it's just a pointless drill then, right? We have to make this make sense for the players because we should be able to go three passes and a layup. I do it with four fifth graders. Right, they got a sprint, okay, but four fifth graders should be able to get up the court on a middle school size court. On a high, they do it at IBA, right? Three passes and a layup. You can do a bounce pass for the last layup if you like to. I like to just do chest passes, that's up to you, right? There's no wrong or right in that type of situation. Do a three man weave, tuck it and run. Now we'll do all type of competitions with it. You gotta make 20 in two minutes, whatever it's gonna be, but we're teaching them to catch the ball, pass the ball, run, sprint, all right, watch, go. So that just lowered, that's how it should look. We shouldn't be running lane straight here. We have to start running. This second pass has to run a slant. This person has to run a up and out. It's really like kind of football, right? Go, do it again, go. Sprint, good. Now, you'll notice Brian kind of didn't take an extra step to pass there. It throws off the whole drill on spacing. That's what I'm saying. Like you have to be that anal about teaching it because they have to understand shortening the distance of passes, really getting the ball to somebody, we'll tell them every single time, hit them in the 14. All right, they have to get honed in on these fundamentals. Do it again, go. So then they have to learn how to sprint. Now, there's different variations of things you can go into where you can flow into something, into something, into something, okay? So we'll end up doing two passes right now into a driving kick. All right, so what that will mean is that he will take the dribble, and he will advance to Liam. He's gonna advance to Tom. Tom's gonna take off dribbling right. Max is running straight corner for the shot. So Tom ends up taking two dribbles, he'll get there, and then we'll shoot, come back, hustle up. So there's different variations of things you can do when we start getting into transition. All right, but it really it's about advancing the ball and getting it up there. Play fast, coach, that's more fun. Play fast, go, let's go. Push, push, take off Tom, go. Next group, go. Good, go, next group, go.
Good. So we'll end up doing that. Okay. Stop. We will do three on two. All right. Give me two on defense. Hustle up. Now you can start this out of a five man weave or you could just go three on two. Right. Or you could go two man back about. It's always about reading the uh, advantage in two passes. They got to get a shot off. Right. It's got to be one second pass. They got to have a shot off. Okay. Go. Let's go. Dribbling up. Dribbling up. Dribbling up. Push it. Go. Good. Good. We might allow that one, right? We understand the defensive tandem. Three on offense. Go back. Hustle up. Stop. So we're going to have who's taking first pass. So we'll take, tell bottom guy take first pass, right? So if he advances the ball over here, we're coming here. Now, what's he in? He's in a closeout situation. So I'll see we went over closeout, so that should be right, okay? Hey, we're going to tell Brian to hold there. He's got to make something happen with the ball. We don't want him to take one dribble and just pick it up. We want him to make something happen with the ball, or he's got to get it out of his hands. You got two seconds to make a decision, right? Either go or pass the ball back, okay? Obviously, Max going to have to zone off because he's got two, okay? This is normally how the three on two, two on one, if you were going back, is played, all right? Go back. I'm going to show you how we play it now. Here we and we'll have him start here and him start here, okay? We will tell the ball handler to go. Back off. All right? Once we tell the ball handler to go, we're telling them to go down and sprint. Because then we can start seeing if you really got your shot off in two dribble or two passes or not, right? Because you have defense coming down. All right? They have to end up getting. Now, we'll always go red versus black, whatever we're doing. But this really teaches them, hey, you got to do something in transition because defense is coming backwards, okay? For this sake, I'm going to say go, and everybody's going to go because you guys are a mile and a half away. All right? Back up a little bit because this just doesn't make it that much fair. You three are trying to score. You guys are on defense. All right? Go. Let's go. Go. Go, Trent. Let's go. Give it up. Yes. Stop. So we see that? This is a true fast break now. So now we can start hammering on, hey, you got to get the ball out your hands. Hey, you got to catch the ball quicker. Hey, this is more game simulated. All right, when you start moving up and they've learned some things, make your drills more game simulated now. Let's go do it again. Same way, same way. So Max is really fast. So I'm going to tell him to slow down. All right. Defense, I will tell you when to go. Okay? I will tell you when to go, defense. Offense, go. Defense, go. Good. Good. Which happens in a real game. Right? So we got to make real decisions, right? So now Peter's going to believe me when I say, hey, that's not going to work in the game. But when you don't have extra people out here for them to see it, they'll never believe you. But now all of a sudden, now we're going to do it again. And hey, he's going to have to make a different decision, right? But now we have it on possessions. So we're going to end up going red has five possessions, black has five possessions. Whoever scores the most is the winner. There's a winner and a loser. Push-ups for the losers, right? Let's go back, do it again. One more time. So again, it ends up being into competition. Yes, sir. No, we really teach them one dribble, get the ball out your hands. Really? Okay. really what we're going to say is advance the ball over half court in 1.5 seconds. Okay. In every guard that we've ever raised, I've always said get the ball across half court in 1.5. That's with the dribble or with the pass, get the ball up the court. You can always get it over and stop, but you put pressure on the defense if we really get the ball across half court quickly. All right, so we want to get out their hands, right? We always go back to John Wall. He got first round, first pick, not dribbling the ball at Kentucky. That's how he got to the NBA. He didn't dribble, right? He just got the ball out of his hands every single time. All right, so advance the ball, advance the ball. We want to put pressure on him. When we'll start to show is defense lift up here. Defense lift up. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Lift up more, lift up more, lift up more, lift up more. Right there, okay? So in this situation, what we'll start to explain to them is why do you have to run your lanes wide? Why do you have to run them hard? Okay, if Peter jogs and you jog and you're advancing, right, and defense is going, defense is going, you'd have to go back a little bit there. But this is it. This is as far as he's going to have to go, right? Go back again. Go back again. Hurry up. Everybody sprint. Go. Stop. That just made his job a lot easier because they made the defense go. It's all about stretching the D, right? So your lane runners have to run hard because the defense has to sink more which makes it easier for your point guard or who's ever dribbling the ball to see what to do, right? If everybody's jammed up here, it's hard to make a decision. It's hard to run a fast break. But if we get the ball across half court quickly, it stretches the defense out immensely. All right, so it's all about pace. Get the ball up the court. Get the ball out your hands. All right, so we'll just tell them get the ball up the court 
any way possible, right? We'll teach them to bend the ball, we'll teach them to cut it and keep going, we'll teach them a lot of different ways to do that stuff. Let's do this one more time and then we're gonna get into some other stuff. Let's go, hustle up. Doing the same thing. I'll tell you when to go, thank you, Mr. Rivera. Go, go. So we can be sure that, hey, that's a stop and pop, shoot the ball. Cool, we have no problem with that, all right? We'll teach them to be aggressive, drive to the rim, those type of situations, all right? I want you to partner up one ball on the right, one ball on the left. Let's go, oh, I'm sorry, no balls on the left. Hustle up, hustle up. Partner up, doesn't matter who. Get one ball between two, let's go. One ball between two. If you seem to be struggling with the passing off the dribble thing, all right, and they're not really understanding getting the ball, taking two steps and passing the basketball, break down to this drill, I want you on the block. Uh, actually, I want you right here on the elbow. All right, you're gonna take, just back off time. You're gonna take one dribble, you're gonna advance the ball to Justin. Justin, you're gonna dribble, you're gonna shoot. You're gonna stay there, you're just gonna be in a sprint. All right, so this is gonna, you're just gonna sprint down and you're gonna stop and pop. You're gonna dribble, you're gonna pass it off the bounce to him, okay? Go. 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 So I guess here's my point to you, right? Basketball is very simple. Don't make it complex, all right? You have to learn how to pass the ball off the bounce, get the ball out your hands, catch the ball, dribble the ball, don't travel, shoot the ball. All right, we saw this exact situation in three on two. So if they're having trouble advancing the ball, just break down to a simple drill like this. All right, now we will go back here. Let's go, hustle up, hustle up. Uh, Justin and Max up. Justin and Max are up. Justin, you're on defense. Max, you're on offense. And you see everybody take a real big deep breath because they know what's coming, right? So we'll play zigzag. Now our zigzag is a lot different than most people's zigzags, right? Our zigzag, we expect a bloodbath, okay? Because all I want to get accomplished is mentality. That's it. I will start to teach them how to play defense if you get beat, but we want to get up, pressure the basketball, and handle pressure, okay? That's a big thing that we're not good at out here is handling pressure because we always go to a zone. We, we don't ever put the kids in pressure situations. Make them have to handle pressure. So Justin will start with the ball, he'll shove it in Max's chest, and when he's ready to go, now we're playing. Everybody else back off, and now there are no rules. Get the ball up the court is the only rule. If the ball is on the ground and you don't dive on it, well, that's gonna be a problem for everybody. So we're teaching mentality right now, right? It's fun for them, they get excited, but it also teaches if Justin keeps on stealing the ball from Max, I will not pull Max out the drill and I will keep Justin on him. You're gonna have to figure it out, kid, right? Now you're gonna have to watch so you don't lose them, okay, because some of them get embarrassed and all these other types, but hey, man, this is what it is, it's basketball. We can't sub out because you're getting killed. You just have to step up, kid. Like, we have to start teaching them what it is to be a basketball player. Now, match them up appropriately so that really doesn't happen that much, okay? But if the ball gets taken from them, Shove it right back to you. If he runs right by you, hey, you're gonna get up and do, have to do it again. It's basketball. We have to create this mentality in the players, okay? And that's gonna translate over into your team. Go, check up, good luck. Yep, let's go. Let's go, yep. So we'll end up playing just to the free throw line, right? Now, that's one variation that we'll do that's just all about hard nose going, okay? The other way that we will end up going, you two go, everybody's not gonna go. What we're gonna end up teaching really is the ball handler, you need to get some contact, then you need to back off and get some space, all right? Defender, if you get beat, you end up running a button hook, all right, and putting your chest back in front of somebody, all right? Meaning, if Max is dribbling left very slowly, and Justin right now is beat, He's not running to his body, he's gonna sprint ahead of him and he's gonna run a button hook and then put his chest back in front of him. So we'll start going over those principles as well, all right? So we'll play it a lot of different ways. Some of it's just hard nose. We want them to beat the heck out of each other. The other ways that we'll do it, we'll really start teaching them, hey, one arm length away, make them change four times. Offensively, they should change two times. All right, we'll do all these different type of things, okay? But again, it's all about a mentality. It's all about handling some pressure. Okay, there's no point, coaches, after they're done dribbling by themselves, you're gonna have to put somebody in front of them and you're gonna have to deal with the fact that they're gonna lose the ball. But then you can help them learn how not to lose the ball and that's gonna translate over once again into the game.
okay? So that's the stuff that we'll do pretty much in transition. Now we'll have, let's go five black across the free throw line. Andrew, you'll have to join in on this black. Andrew, you be the black. Stop, Trent, go back there. Nope, how about this, Trent, you stay. Max, you go there. Max, you switch red. Switch red, silver. Nope, Tom, you're fine, stay red. So this is called North Carolina Fast Break. I'm sure most of you guys have seen it. Um, it starts to uh, address a lot of other things. Max, give me the ball, please. So you end up having five across and five across, okay? Um, you give everybody a number, so you'd say one, two, three, four, five. That's their same numbers as well, right? So what number are you? Beautiful, you? Four. Beautiful. No, you're not. Why would you be four? Okay, thank you. Okay. Which one are you? Three. So then who would you be, Trent? Beautiful. Four, okay? So the way it works, coach stands behind him, and all you end up doing is this and saying one. Stop. 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 So whoever I call has to go touch the baseline, and then obviously we have a numbers advantage. Okay? And then we're playing out of that. We're working defense where we're talking about communication. We're working offense, score on a numbers advantage. Okay? It ends up being five on four. All right, you can end up doing it uh, red versus black, blue versus gold, whatever it might be, okay? Uh, two. <laughs> Stop. So we'll end up doing things like that, right? So it's North Carolina fast break. Uh, it's a fun drill. Again, that ends up being in the competitive section. So if you end up doing shell, working on screens, whatever you were doing, boom turn into something that's competition and really hone in on what you're trying to get accomplished with it, right? But that's a fun little transition drill that we will always do with them. <laughs>